Hi everybody and welcome to the TensorFlow Developer Summit and welcome to the TensorFlow Cafe at the summit. I'm Lawrence Moroni and it's my honor to chat with Jeff Dean. Uh, the keynote has just finished. Jeff, great keynote. Thank you, thank you. I really love the part where you were talking about like, you know, looking at changing the future using TensorFlow and some of the great stuff that we're doing. So uh, could you tell me a little bit more about it? Sure, I mean, I think uh, over the last four or five years, we've really seen tremendous developments in a lot of sort of core areas of machine learning research being turned from sort of research ideas into things that are actually practical things that you can use to solve problems across a really wide set of domains. Right. And I think that's part of the excitement is we know that things like computer vision that works well, speech recognition, uh, you know, understanding language and sequences, all these things can be applied in so many different areas of the world. It's just amazing. And, you know, in the keynote, I sort of highlighted things through the lens of the National Academy of Engineering in the United States. Uh, they put out a list of these 14 grand engineering challenges. I, I, I like <laughs> yeah. the sound of that. So I, I talked about oh, a couple of them. there's only 14 of them. Yeah, right? only 14. <laughs> we got 100 years, 80-ish. Yeah, so you, you highlighted two of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, one was uh, uh, engineering the tools of scientific discovery, and I think actually TensorFlow itself is a kind of a, a key part of that, because machine learning is very clearly impacting many different scientific domains and engineering domains today. And uh, so, for example, our group has done some research on how to use machine learning to tackle quantum chemistry problems. Right. And like that's not immediately an obvious fit in, in most people's minds, but you can actually train a machine learning model that emulates the behavior of a very expensive, more traditional HPC style uh, quantum chemistry simulator. And you get essentially the same accuracy, but it's 300,000 times faster. And so that just would, is a fundamentally different kind of tool for a chemist, right? If you have something that's 300,000 times faster, you, know, you can imagine screening 100 million candidate molecule configurations and finding the 10,000 that are most interesting, whereas you couldn't do that. Before. And it also means that more research opportunities can open up, right? Because your 300 times, 300,000 times faster means that there's more bandwidth to try different things, different experiments. That's right. And like all of the 14 challenges, sort of four of them were related to things that I think better understanding of chemical properties of and materials were going to be pretty important in. Things like, you know, making solar energy more affordable or things like that. Uh, and so machine learning clearly can tackle those things. But uh, engineering the tools of scientific discovery is a pretty broad area. And one of the things I talked about was being able to automate solving of new problems with machine learning. I think one of the problems in the world is there's so much potential for applying machine learning to different problems, but there's a fairly limited set of people that have the skills and expertise to really do that effectively. And by democratizing that, you're broadening that base of people who, That's can, right. who can have yeah. an impact. Yeah. So. One of the other things that you spoke about, which was close to my heart, was really healthcare. Mm -hmm. And you spoke about like the diabetic retinop retinopathy. Yes. I could never say the word. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, it's just amazing like how the, the, the skill of a machine learned system can approach that and even surpass that of many humans now. Right. I mean, I think the, the realization and, and advances in computer vision, you know, mean that the same, pretty much the same technology that is powering labeling your Google Photos with like, is that a picture of a mountain or a, a Labrador? It can be applied to medical imaging problems. And our group has been doing a lot of work in many different sort of domains of medical imaging, uh, ophthalmology, pathology, radiology, dermatology kinds of problems. We're sort of farthest along and started the earliest on ophthalmology problems because it's a very unmet need around the world. They're just, in many parts of the world, there just aren't enough ophthalmologists to screen people for this uh, disease, diabetic retinopathy. And it's a very serious and degenerative eye disease. So you can actually lose your vision if it's not diagnosed in time. But if you catch it in time, then it's very treatable. Yeah, and it's a beautiful symmetry that computer vision's helping real vision. That's right, yeah, that's <laughs> right. true. I had you know, made that connection, but yes, yes. I only thought of it when you were saying computer vision. Visionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, I mean, the one thing that we showed in the keynote that was really inspiring was the cassava. Mm -hmm. And the example of cassava and using like mobile phones to diagnose the leave, right? right, right. To see if it. And I know you grew up. You spent some of your childhood in Africa. Yeah, know, I so. actually moved around quite a bit as a kid. And uh, one of the places that I lived was in East Africa, in northwestern Uganda, for a year when I was five. I also spent six months in Somalia when I was thirteen. Uh, but in Uganda, um, in that particular area, 
cassava is sort of one of the fundamental crops that's grown to sort of provide most of the basic nutrition for, for meals. And, uh, you know, when I was five, we were living in this very rural, uh, small, small village of like a thousand people. So it was a very agrarian kind of, kind of area. I used to love to go out in the fields and kind of help pull up cassava <laughs> and do things. Wow. Um, and so actually when I saw this, this video uh, of a group at Penn State and at the IITA uh, Institute in Tanzania that had do, done some work on diagnosis of disease versus not diseased cassava uh, leaves, essentially. You take pictures of the leaves and then you can tell, you know, is this a healthy plant or is it diseased? And if, if it's diseased, um, you know, what you should do to treat it. And, and that's like a very useful and, and fundamental thing that you can do. And it relies on machine learning and computer vision and sort of a, an app crafted so that farmers can do this. And it's almost the stuff of sci-fi, right? That you, if you told me five years ago that you could go out with a mobile phone and start looking at leaves and then diagnose if they're diseased or not, it would be, it would be hard to believe. But now it's possible and now it's happening. There's so many potential applications of this. I mean, you know, another one of my favorites is the Google Translate app which has the ability to like, you turn on the camera on your phone and you hover over text in another language and it superimposes translated text. Oh yes. And so that relies on many different kinds of machine learning in there. There's like the computer vision to do the OCR to recognize the text. And then there's uh, another machine learning model to actually do the translation from one language to another. And then another model to figure out how to superimpose the text back in the font that you were actually seeing it in, yeah. in the and original text, over and it, hover so. it over. And, and, and it's just like very cool how, you know, these magical experiences can be crafted from, you know, a few core machine learning models stitched together in the right way. And it also makes the world a smaller place, right? So, like, I mean, I spend a lot of time traveling and like exactly that translation thing that it saved me from embarrassing myself by ordering something I don't like. Exactly. <laughs> you know, in, Especially in, in languages language. where the script is even very different than, yeah. than the script you're familiar with. I think that's, you know, you just feel very lost and this can make you feel less lost. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. And I think we're only just getting started, right? Absolutely. So. Thank you so much, Jeff. That's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Good pleasure chatting with you. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, if you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Jeff, just please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Thanks.